Catching Pokemon has been a pillar of the series since its inception, but what if I removed this concept completely? Without catching any Pokemon at all, could I Nuzlocke Pokemon Fire Red under a hardcore rule set, where fainting equals death, no items are allowed in battle, and I can't overlevel my team? Well, I tried. Here's how I went. I decided to pick Bulbasaur as my starter. The reason for this is that Bulbasaur has the best type matchup against the first few gyms. This is particularly important in this challenge, as our early game team will be really limited, so I'll need every advantage that I can get. I defeated our rival and trained Bulbasaur on Route 101 to level 10. It learned the moves Leech Seed and Vine Whip along the way. The second rival fight isn't easy, as he's now also got a Pidgey. However, I outlasted it by setting up Leech Seed and using Growl until my recovery from Leech Seed was greater than the damage he could deal. My accuracy had been lowered a few stages, and I couldn't reset my stats by switching, as I only have one Pokemon. In the end, it was close, but I was able to land a few hits and employ the same strategy to take down Charmander. A short time later, I made it to Pewter City. I've still got one Pokemon, however Bulbasaur can easily deal with Brock's Rock Team. So with a few Vine Whips, I'm able to get my first badge. My level cap now increases to 21, as this is the highest level of the next gym. There are a lot of trainers on Route 3, and most don't pose a problem. However, the very first trainer has two Pidgey, which is a problem for Bulbasaur. I got really lucky in this fight though, as the second Pidgey could have finished me off multiple times, but the AI decided to spare me by spamming Sand Attack. At the end of Route 3, Bulbasaur reached level 16 and evolved into Ivysaur. Inside the Pokemon Center on Route 4, this man is selling a Magikarp. I take him up on his offer, and we've now got a second Pokemon. I then headed into Mount Moon, where I grabbed the Helix Fossil. It won't be much use for now, but I'll need to hold on to it for later. Now in Cerulean City, it's time for the second gym. Misty Staryu goes down quickly to a Bullet Seed. Her Starmie is more dangerous, however, it's nothing that Ivysaur can't handle. A Leech Seed and a few Bullet Seeds is enough to get our second badge. It was now time for another battle with our rival. His team is much improved as he leads with a dangerous Pidgeotto. My plan is to set up Leech Seed and Growl, however I miss, and Pidgeotto cripples me with a critical hit on Gust. A quick attack finishes off Ivysaur, and Magikarp helplessly splashes around until it also falls. Our first wipe. My second attempt goes similarly to the first, but once I get a Magikarp on Route 4, this time I switch train it against wild Pokemon. However, this presents an interesting roadblock. Magikarp learns Tackle at level 15, so needs to be switch trained until then. However, as I can't overlevel, Ivysaur needs to remain below level 21 for it to be usable in Gym 2. Furthermore, it needs to remain below level 24 to be usable in Gym 3. What does this all mean? Well, with Ivysaur already at level 16 by the time I get my Magikarp, it's very difficult to switch train it without overleveling Ivysaur. As such, after defeating Misty again on my second run, I decided to retry the Nugget Bridge rival battle with just Ivysaur. Unfortunately, I forgot that I was still leading Magikarp. I switched into Ivysaur, but had my accuracy lowered multiple times and couldn't land any attacks. Pidgeotto then proceeded to once again wipe my team, and I was back to square one. To make matters worse, on my third attempt, I lost the first rival battle. On the fourth, Charmander got a critical hit wiping me once more. I was disheartened, and began thinking that maybe this challenge just wasn't possible. But on my fifth attempt, things went a little smoother. I was able to win the first rival battle, but my goal was now to make it to Magikarp with as little EXP as possible. This would give me enough room within the level cap to switch train Magikarp until it learned Tackle. I ran from all wild Pokemon, skipped the second rival fight, and only had a single battle in the Viridian Forest. This meant that my Bulbasaur was only level 7 for the battle against Brock. I didn't have Vine Whip yet, and Tackle was largely ineffective, so I needed to rely on my Leech Seed and Growl combo. After enough Growls, my Leech Seed recovers more health than Brock can remove with Tackle. The battle is long, but eventually I'm victorious. I avoided as many trainers as I could in Route 3. As such, Bulbasaur was only at level 14 when I received my Magikarp this time. Some tedious switch training brought Magikarp to level 15, while my Ivysaur was only level 20. 
Using only Tackle, I then trained Magic Up three levels in the Route 4 grass before using the two rare candies available in the game thus far to boost it to level 20, allowing it to evolve into the mighty Gyarados. Gyarados is able to solo Misty's gym thanks to Bite, giving us a second badge once more. It's now time for a rematch with our rival, however, I'm in a much better position this time around. Pidgeotto goes down to a few water pulses, as does Rattata, as does Charmander. Abra is last, however, quickly goes down to a bite. Much better. My plan is to rely on Gyarados as much as possible until the third gym. There are a bunch of battles between the second and third gyms, however, the level cap only raises by three levels. I can't risk overleveling Ivysaur, as Gyarados won't be useful against the electric Pokemon of the third gym. The next few routes are mostly handled by Gyarados, allowing me to safely arrive in Vermilion City with Ivysaur at level 22. Now on board the SSN, Gyarados solos our rival once more in a similar fashion to the last battle. We then get the Cut HM, and I have to teach it to Ivysaur as it's the only Pokemon I have that can learn it. I can now access the third gym, however, unfortunately, Gyarados just exceeded the level cap for the next gym, so I'll have to deposit it in the PC for now. Before our battle with Surge, I gave Ivysaur a Cherry Berry to heal off Paralysis. I took Voltorb down with Razor Leaf, however, I lost a lot of health in the process. I knew I couldn't finish off the fight with such little health remaining, so I put Pikachu to sleep and set up Leech Seed for recovery. This gave me a little extra health for when Raichu was sent out. Raichu can be difficult due to double team spam, however, I got lucky and landed a Sleep Powder, followed by Leech Seed and two Razor Leafs. This was enough to finish Raichu, and gives me my third badge. The level cap is now raised to 29, but there are a lot of potential battles between now and the next gym, so I decide to still avoid as many battles as possible to minimise my EXP. I then raced through the Rock Tunnel and Lavender Town before eventually reaching Celadon City. This is a critical point in the challenge, as we can obtain our third Pokemon here, Eevee. I immediately head over to the department store to grab a Thunderstone and evolve it into Jolteon. In hindsight, I should have waited for Eevee to reach level 30 before evolving it, as it would have learned Bite. However, it's too late to change that now, so I'll have to go without Bite, at least for the remainder of this attempt. I then take some hot tea and give it to the guards, which opens up Saffron City. This is another important location for the challenge, but won't be significant until later on. I then went via the Diglett Cave to Route 1, where I tediously maxed out Jolteon's speed EVs. It was now time for the 4th gym. Erika's grass Pokemon are a neutral matchup for us. I lead Gyarados against Victory Bell, and get a lucky turn 1 flinch. Gyarados does get paralysed, however, I gave it a Cherry Berry before the battle, so this healed right away, allowing me to finish Victory Bell with a second secret power. Tangela then goes down in 3 turns. Vile Plume is last, and it nearly takes Gyarados down. I switched into Ivysaur, and Erika healed. Ivysaur lowered Vile Plume once more, however, some unlucky paralysis turns forced me to switch into Jolteon, who was fortunately able to clean up Vile Plume. I've now got 4 badges, and the level cap increases to 43. This is a big jump, however, this level cap is the same for the next 2 gyms, so I'll need to plan accordingly to make sure that I remain below it for both Koga and Sabrina. I then slapped a few grunts in the rocket hideout before coming face to face with Giovanni. His team doesn't pose much of a problem. A water pulse from Gyarados takes down his first two Pokemon, and a few dragon rages is enough to finish Kangaskhan. We've secured victory and are awarded with a Sylph Scope. Back to Lavender Town. In the Pokemon Tower, our rival wants a rematch. His Pidgeotto struggles to damage Gyarados, and I'm able to take it down with two secret powers. Coward then sends out a Gyarados of his own. This should be easy for Jolteon to handle, however, I forgot to teach it an electric move. Whoops. So instead, I pivot into Ivysaur to set up Leech Seed, and then back into my own Gyarados. Intimidate lowers the opposing Gyarados' attack, meaning that my Gyarados can outclass it easily. Execute is next, however, quickly falls to secret power. Kadabra goes down to a single bite, and Charmeleon immediately falls to Water Pulse, giving us the win. I use the Trainers and the Wild Ghastly in the tower as an opportunity to train Jolteon and give it some special attack EVs. Ivysaur viciously cuts Marowak down with Razor Leaf and evolves into Venusaur. After saving Mr. Fuji and assuring him that Marowak was peacefully put to rest, we've now got the Pokeflute, which opens up the map even more. 
With our team currently leveled in the low 30s, I was confident that we could take on the dojo in Saffron City. The Pokemon here are primarily physical attackers, so I lead with Gyarados due to its intimidate ability. The leader of the dojo can be dangerous, as he has two level 37 Pokemon, but Gyarados hard counters Hitmonlee. Against Hitmonchan, Venusaur sets up Leech Seed, which allows me to take it down with Razor Leaf. We're now given the opportunity to take either a Hitmonlee or Hitmonchan. The coverage provided by Hitmonchan's elemental punches is tempting, however, its low special attack really limits its usefulness, so in the end, I went with the hard kicking Hitmonlee. I'll be travelling to Fuchsia City next, and we can either go via the bicycle road or the ocean route. I decided to go via the ocean route, as Jolteon is well equipped to deal with the water and flying Pokemon that frequent this area. After sending Snorlax back to the mountains, it was time to grind through the ridiculous number of trainers in the next few routes. Seriously, why are there so many people here? Eventually, I make it to Fuchsia City. I'm able to grab the Surf HM here, as well as the Strength HM. It's now time for the next gym challenge against Koga, a user of Poison Pokemon. I'm quite a bit below the level cap, however, the next two gyms both have the same level cap, and I'd rather be underleveled for Koga than Sabrina. I lead with Gyarados against Coughing, and Gyarados takes it down with two strengths. Muck is his next Pokemon. This thing is so bulky, and can increase its evasiveness with Minimize, making it very deadly. I switched into Venusaur, set up Leech Seed, and put Muck to sleep. After some stalling, I switched into Jolteon, as Shockwave can't miss. I was badly poisoned, however, Jolteon was able to take Muck down. The second coughing quickly falls to Jolteon. Last is Weezing, however, my Sleep Powder and Leech Seed combo on Venusaur allow me to weaken it substantially. I then switched into Gyarados, who finishes the job, giving us a fifth badge. We can now use Surf outside of battle, so I taught it to Gyarados and began the long voyage by foot back to Pallet Town. On the way, I grabbed the Fly HM, and used Cut to grab the Old Amber from Pewter City. I then surfed south of Pallet Town to Cinnabar Island. There's a gym here, but I'll be dealing with that later. For now, I'm only interested in the Island Laboratory, as this will allow me to revive my two fossil Pokemon, Aerodactyl and Ormonite. Finally, a flying Pokemon. I then set out to train my new Pokemon. Firstly, I maxed out their speed EVs by killing over 250 Route 1 Pokemon with both Ormonite and Aerodactyl. I then maxed Aerodactyl's attack by killing a boatload of Paris in Mount Moon. Finally, I Ghostbusted the Pokemon Tower with Ormonite, maxing its special attack EVs. While I'm undergoing this arthritis inducing grinding session, if you're enjoying the video so far, subscribe to the channel as it really helps me out. Anyway, with everyone at level 40, it was now time to head back to Saffron City to infiltrate the Sylph building and put a stop to Team Rocket. Once inside, our rival wants another battle, however, he's no match for our new and improved team. Aerodactyl sweeps his Pidgeot with Ancient Power, Execute with Fly, Alakazam with Fly, Gyarados with Ancient Power, and Charizard with Ancient Power. After the battle, I'm gifted a Lapras, which will be incredibly useful later on. I'm now face to face with Giovanni once more, but this is another incredibly free fight as Ormastar is able to sweep with Surf. Not bad. We've saved the day and are now clear to take on the 6th gym and its leader, Sabrina. I led with Ormastar and removed Kadabra with a bite. I can't take Mr. Mime down in one shot, however, I'm eventually able to drain Sabrina's potions and take it down with bite too. Next is Venomoth, so I switched into Aerodactyl, who takes it down with a single ancient power. Her last Pokemon is Alakazam, however, thanks to my training, Aerodactyl outspeeds Alakazam and targets its low physical defense by using Fly. This is enough to take down Alakazam in one shot and gives me my sixth badge. I instantly fly over to Cinnabar Island for our next gym challenge. I'm a little below the level cap, however, I feel confident given that my team has three water types. This fight is a slaughter. Ormastar has a strong resistance to fire and can easily sweep blame with Surf. Seriously, I embarrass this man. After telling Bill to mind his own business, it was time to backtrack to Viridian City. After some leveling, I was ready for the 8th and final gym. As we know from our previous encounters, Giovanni uses ground type Pokemon. I led with Venusaur and put Rhyhorn to sleep. I then used Growth twice to give me a huge special attack boost. A single Razor Leaf was enough to take down Rhyhorn. Doug Trio is next, but it's also no match for Venusaur's leaves. Nidoqueen suffers the same fate, as does Nidoking, and as does the last Rhyhorn. With that, 
I've now got all eight badges. On the road to the Pokemon League, our rival wants another battle with his seriously improved team. I lead with Jolteon, who suffers some big damage from a critical hit Earthquake, however, removes Pidgeot with a single Shockwave. Rhyhorn is next, so I switch into Gyarados, thinking he will go for an Earthquake. But Rhyhorn uses Takedown, however, this does very little damage anyway. A single Surf on the next turn is enough to remove Rhyhorn. Execute is next, so I switch into Aerodactyl. I get lucky as it misses Sleep Powder, allowing me to use Fly on the next turn and take it down in one shot. Gyarados then comes out. I would have liked to switch into Jolteon, however its health is so low and I don't want to risk it. I decide to stay in with Aerodactyl and go for an Ancient Power. It doesn't KO Gyarados thanks to the Intimidate attack drop, however Gyarados goes for Rain Dance, which allows me to take it down on the very next turn. Alakazam is scary, and I was a little worried when it used Calm Mind, however my Aerodactyl can take it down in two shots with Fly, despite its lowered attack. Last is Charizard. Aerodactyl counters it nicely, and uses Ancient Power for 4 times damage. While it doesn't kill, Charizard doesn't really have anything threatening for Aerodactyl, so I take it down the very next turn. A trip through the badge check and a trouble-free journey through Victory Road brings me to the Pokemon League for the final leg of this challenge. After some meticulous grinding and preparing my team, it was time to take on the Elite Four. I decided to bring Venusaur, Jolteon, Gyarados, Aerodactyl, Ormastar, and Lapras. My team is quite water heavy, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem as we've got some diverse coverage. First is Lorelei. My plan is to put Dugong to sleep before setting up with Growth and Sunny Day to fire off some seriously powerful solar beams. But Sleep Powder missed, and Dugong got a critical hit with Ice Beam, killing Venusaur instantly. My Elite Four challenge only just started, and I've already lost a key member of my team. <sighs> I sent in Jolteon next, who takes some hail damage, however takes Dugong down with a Shockwave. Cloyster tries to stall me out with Protect for whatever reason, but eventually it also goes down to Shockwave. Next is Slowbro. I put it in low HP range, however it yawns on Jolteon, so I switched him to Aerodactyl, who also gets yawned, for whatever reason. But a pivot back into Jolteon allows me to eventually take Slowbro down. Lapras is next, and it's no easy target given its bulk. I switched into Ormistar as it has a reasonable type matchup. A mix of Toxic, Protect, and some tedious switching allows me to eventually remove Lapras. Jinx is last, and I made a questionable decision and switched into Aerodactyl. An Ice Punch instantly puts me at below 50% HP, and a crit could have been deadly there. However, I know that an Ancient Power is enough to take it down, and this quickly finishes the job. With that, Lorelei is done, and I now move on to Bruno. Bruno leads Onyx, however I instantly drown his Rock Snake with Surf. Having just witnessed this, Bruno the Genius sends in another Onyx, which of course also gets surfed on. What an idiot. His last three Pokemon are Fighting types. While my Ormistar is weak to fighting, I decide to keep it in against Hitmonchan due to its huge physical defense. Surf is a two hit kill, however Bruno goes for counter, which fails, so I easily take Hitmonchan down. Hitmonlee is next, and I got greedy and went for a Surf. A crit would have killed Ormistar, but I was lucky to hang on. Surf doesn't kill, but does big damage. I then switched into Gyarados to get an Intimidate off. Hitmonlee's lowered attack means it can barely touch Gyarados. This lets me set up two Dragon Dancers and take out Hitmonlee with a single return. Machamp hangs on slightly longer, but ultimately falls to my boosted Gyarados. That's Bruno done. Agatha is next. She leads Gengar, which is incredibly dangerous as it can use Double Team and Toxic to sweep your team if you're either unlucky or unprepared. Fortunately, I'm neither of those. I taught Lapras Psychic and maxed its speed EVs, allowing it to outspeed Gengar and take it out in one turn. Golbat is next. While I could probably keep Lapras in and beat Golbat, I need to keep Lapras healthy for later in the fight, so I decide to switch into Aerodactyl. I take a little bit of damage, but I'm able to take Golbat down with a single Ancient Power on the very next turn. Arbok is next, but struggles to have much of an impact. Aerodactyl takes it down with a few Earthquakes. Next is Haunter, so I switch back into Lapras, who luckily avoids Hypnosis, and takes it down with a Psychic. Agatha's final Pokemon is a second, stronger Gengar. I'm not so lucky this time, as this one outspeeds me and puts me to sleep. Lapras is bulky, so it survives 3 hits from Gengar, but still won't wake up. 
As such, I decided to switch into Jolteon. Fortunately, Agatha went for Nightmare, which had no effect. I then used Thunder Wave, mainly to slow Gengar down and allow me to outspeed it with my other team members. In the end, this wasn't necessary, as Jolteon dodged a Hypnosis and took Gengar down with a few Shockwaves. With Agatha defeated, we now move on to Lance, the Dragon type user. As he leads with Gyarados, the obvious choice for me was Jolteon. A single Shockwave is enough to take it down. Dragonair is next. I pivoted into Lapras, who removes it with a single Ice Beam. So far, so good. Lance then sends out Aerodactyl, so I go into Ormastar, who easily eats two Ancient Powers, and removes Aerodactyl with Surf. The second Dragonair is next, so I switch back into Lapras. However, get paralyzed, which cripples my strategy, as I no longer outspeed Lance's last two Pokemon. While I can take Dragonair down with Lapras, I don't have much of an answer for Dragonite, and ultimately fall to a Hyper Beam. I then send out Ormastar and go for Toxic, but I missed and completely wasted the Hyper Beam recharge turn. I land the Toxic the second time, but Dragonite uses Outrage and comes so close to eliminating my Ormastar. I just hung on and switched into Gyarados to get an Intimidate down. I was confident that a Hyper Beam plus Toxic damage would be enough. However, my small brain forgot about the Citrus Berry recovery, which resulted in Dragonite surviving. I had to recharge, and an Outrage from Dragonite did huge damage, but I managed to barely hang on with Gyarados. Toxic damage on the next turn was enough to finish the job. We managed to beat Lance, but my team and I were not unscathed in the process. I'd lost some key Pokemon along the way, leaving me with only 4 team members left to take on the champion. The champion, and our rival, leads with Pidgeot, so I decided to lead Jolteon and took it down in a single shot. Next is Rhydon. As this is an awful matchup for me, I decided to switch into Aerodactyl and correctly anticipated the Earthquake from Rhydon. I used an Earthquake of my own and thought this would kill, however Rhydon easily tanked it and hit me with a super effective Rock Tomb, lowering my health significantly. Despite a speed drop, I know I'm still faster than Rhydon and take it down with a second Earthquake on the next turn. The Champion then sends out Gyarados. This forces me to switch as Aerodactyl's stats have been lowered too much to be useful. My plan is to go into my own Gyarados to let an Intimidate off, however the Champion gets a critical hit, crippling my Gyarados. With his Gyarados having its attack lowered, I'm confident in Jolteon surviving a hit, so I switch and take Gyarados down with a single Shockwave. Next is Alakazam. This thing is incredibly dangerous. I go for Shockwave, however this doesn't do nearly enough damage, and Jolteon barely survives a Psychic. I decided to take a huge risk and went for Thunder. It's got a 30% chance to miss, but I was lucky enough to land it and KO'd Alakazam. Close one. Exeggutor is next. I want to go into Aerodactyl, but its HP is too low to take a hit, so instead I pivot into Gyarados to let off an Intimidate. I go for Return, but this does barely any damage, and Exeggutor takes Gyarados down with a Giga Drain. It's unfortunate, but this does give me an opportunity to go into Aerodactyl, and a single fly should do the job. But I missed, and Aerodactyl goes down. Due to Ormastar's 4 times weakness to grass, I decide to go into Jolteon. However, a shockwave barely damages this stupid tree monster, and Jolteon falls. All that remained was Ormastar. I decided that Bite was my best option, and I was just able to take down Exeggutor. This was huge, as a single Giga Drain would undoubtedly kill Ormastar, and the run would be over. Fittingly, the champion's last Pokemon is his Charizard, and honestly, this couldn't be a better matchup for us. With a single Surf, Charizard and the champion had been defeated. We were battered, we were bruised, but we were victorious. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy content like this, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, let me know in the comments below if you've got any suggestions for future challenges or feedback on the content. I'd love to hear it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.